I want to start as my jumping off point with the research I've been doing for the last three years on Queen Victoria as the first global female leader. And you might ask, what has this got to do with coaching? But actually, um, there is more data on Queen Victoria than on any other human being who has ever lived in the English language, including Winston Churchill, because by the time Churchill lived, people didn't have servants, so they were busier, and they didn't keep diaries. And they did have telephones, but in Queen Victoria's time, everything was done on paper uh, and everybody kept it if it was to do with the Queen. So there's this huge amount of data, which means we can look at everything. She had a hundred year life career, she worked for 63 years, and we can look at who her brilliant coaches were, when she had bad coaching, when she had bad mentoring, and of course, sadly, like so many leaders, the long periods of her life when she didn't have what she needed at all. And so this is an astonishing case study that we can really play with without bothering anybody. We run fish bowls, that's great, um, but they're not very often. And otherwise, it's so hard to see leadership coaching actually happening. So here's an extraordinary example of it actually happening. The question of female leadership has become really central. My interest in Queen Victoria as the first global female leader came up four or five years ago when Hillary Clinton sort of emerged onto the potentially the really the world stage. And I thought we could we could have had Clinton, uh, Angela Merkel, Christine Lagarde, Theresa May, all these women coming to be genuinely global leaders, but there are no case studies. And we know from the research that any underrepresented minority really needs case studies. They value them because there's, there's nothing else. There's, they can't look up to role models. There haven't been any. And so that's the first reason why I think it's relevant. The second is, as I've already said, it's an amazing case study that we can really, really explore the data and look at all sorts of things. The third reason why it's relevant is the research I've been doing, particularly this year, is about what happened in the middle of her career when she had a terrible crash. She really went downhill for 10 years after Prince Albert died. And I've been studying that in, in detail with all this data that's available. And it's hugely relevant to, to leaders today leading the 100 year life because Everybody has some challenges and setbacks and downturns. And I'm looking at particularly what took her down, what were the factors that caused the crash to be so steep, and then obviously what brought her back up. And actually I think the results are really surprising. Uh, I'm going to upset a few people with, not, not our community, but historians with what I say, because I think there are aspects of her work that nobody's really looked at before. But as coaches, we see it in quite a different way. The annual lecture is the great celebration of the community each year. So it's just fun for everybody to come together. And the drinks afterwards, there's that, there's that roar in the room over the drinks. That's fun. But the serious reason is, I think, that it is celebrating our 20th anniversary. And there's a lot that's, that's fantastic and positive and we want to, to celebrate that. But uh, there are obviously enormous challenges in the next 20 years. Um, and I want to set out some ideas of some of the things I think we need to do to meet those challenges. We need to do some things that we haven't been doing yet that I think we need to start doing.